Your Highness, Her Majesty is waiting. Courage. Yes, the resemblance is quite good enough for a waxworks gallery. Don't you recognize me? Should I? Who are you? Where were you born? My birth certificate says Sarpskur Selo. I was really born in Peterhof. Daughter, no doubt, to Tsar Nicholas II and Alexandra. And granddaughter to Maria Theodorovna, Dowager Empress. I have received too many appeals from resurrected Romanovs. The firing squads were such poor shots, it's amazing the revolution succeeded. Twice I started out to find you, but there were so many days, weeks, even months, when I didn't know who I was. And now you do? I thought I did, but if you don't know me, have I changed so much, Your Majesty? One does not change, Mademoiselle. No, not if one is loved. Perhaps if love had not been cut off so abruptly, I would not have changed so much. You are making vulgar and sentimental use of an episode which is for me a great personal sorrow. Forgive me if I forgot for a moment that you would regard that tragedy as more yours than mine. Oh, I'm trying to... You're making it very difficult for me, Grandmama. I did not give you permission to call me that. I'm sorry. <laughs> you think a lonely old woman should be eager to hear someone call her Grandmama? My loneliness has been as sharp as yours. We are most of us lonely. And it is mostly of our own making. But no masquerade of any kind can fill the emptiness. You ask me for recognition. You do it well. Your eyes are moist, your voice blurred with feeling. I believe you are lonely and you want love. Who does not? But the love you beg from me belongs to one who is dead. Are you so sure? You have won the endorsement of the sentimental, the greedy. I am none of those. So you shut me out before you even open that door. I was told you would ask me difficult questions and you were not even interested enough to ask me one. No, I am not interested in a demonstration of the tricks taught you by your business associates. But I care nothing about their business. I care nothing about the money. Ah, but you know of the inheritance. I know what they told me. I don't want money. Tell me to whom it should be given and I'll give it. Easily said, but you cannot give it away until you have it and you cannot get it without first obtaining my recognition. It's useless to say that that is not what I want. You're so hard. I remember hearing father say that in a fight you were harder than anyone in the family. I thought at the time that that was a very strong word to use, just because you and my mother were quarreling over a necklace. Some, some emeralds, yes. You wanted to keep them, though they belonged to the imperial treasurer. Who told you that? Oh, there were many who could have known. You wore them with your last court dress, green and gold velvet and a long train. The photograph was unflattering but accurate. My father took my mother's side in the quarrel. There they were, all of them against you, but you were stubborn. You kept Figgy's emeralds. How did you learn to call Catherine the Great Figgy? We always called her that. Sometimes we gave the nickname to Maria because she had such an eye for the men, and, and Olga used to say... Stop! I forbid you to bandy those names. I can speak of them if I choose. They are my sisters. Imposter! You call me that. If you have any decency, end the charade at once. I will pay you. I will give you more than whatever Bunyan go promised away. you. I'm offering you money. Oh, please go. So, you are giving up. So it wasn't enough to have suffered the asylum, some people trying me, using me, rejecting me. And before that, the cellar and the flight. The rescue from the very edge of the grave. Years of lost memory in an asylum. Excellent material for melodrama. Long, empty days in which the consciousness of living came only through pain. Hardly melodrama. And then slowly, finally struggling up, out of the water, into the light, into the air, thinking, yes, perhaps, yes, I may be, I must be, I am, I am, and my grandmother is still alive to tell me so. My grandmother is alive to hold out her hand full of money. I rather you slap me across the face with that hand. The tragic scene of despair, well done, you're forgetting nothing, are you? I am sorry, mademoiselle, that your failure to win me over is such a cruel disappointment. Goodbye. Oh, don't go. 
But you just told me to. I promise I will not say anything more to try and convince you. Then what do you want of me? A moment or two longer, a moment more to be with you. To pretend you do not think what you do. To close my eyes and pretend it is years ago. A terrace in the summer sun. No, no, no. I promise, I promise I will not say names or places. The smell of the sea air. The sound of a tennis ball. The laughter from the courts beyond the trees. And your voice calling me Malenkaya. And then a sudden lightning in the summer sky. Are you ill? I was, but I'm not now. Have you seen a doctor? A good one? Oh, I'm well acquainted with doctors. But it is kind of you to ask. I'd better go. I'm really not surprised that you do not recognize me. I have changed very much. Indeed. You asked for just one moment. What is strange is that you have changed so little. It is as though the horror of all these last years has only made you strong. I am not strong, mademoiselle. Let me go. You are too clever for me. I'm an old woman. My strength is only outward. Oh, at least we met again. And we will another time when my mind is clearer. But no. No, we better not meet again. You have softened towards me, but later you'll regret it. You'll say it was all acting. <laughs> she was some cheap little actress they hired for money. Well, in a way, they did hire me. I was starving after I ran from the last asylum. I had nowhere to go. Unin found me on the bank of the Seine. Maybe there's more good to him than we think. Well, maybe I should have run away from him, too, but I was so tired of running. <laughs> Are you all right? <laughs> yes. And if it is better for you not to believe, <laughs> you are ill. No. I cough only because I'm a little frightened. It doesn't mean... <laughs> Say that again. That I cough when I'm frightened? When you were a little girl, you coughed when you were frightened. Mayan Kaya. Mayan Kaya. You have come from so far away and I've waited so long. No, 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 don't cry. There's no need to be frightened. No, 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 don't speak. You are safe, Anastasia. You are with me. You're home. The phantoms can go. The closed rooms can be opened. You know, I have a footman. Oh, he's a very old man. And each night he goes from one room to the other, lighting the empty lamps until the great dark rooms are a blaze of light. And perhaps that is true of all of us. We are lighting dead lamps to illumine a past that is gone. I thought you were gone. But you have come back, Anastasia. <laughs> you have come back. But oh, please, if it should not be you, don't ever tell me. 